Hey guys, I just finished watching the Netflix original Project Power. Really dumb title, but uh, it's not as bad as you'd think. It's still not, you know, obviously it's not the greatest thing ever, but it's, it is actually, it did exceed my expectations just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, because I expected like Netflix original trash with low budget trash, really. Uh, but it wasn't really like that. I felt the CGI was good, the action was decent, um, and there was some emotion in, in it. There's not like a ton, but there is an attempt at it, which I appreciate. So not the worst thing ever. And probably my favorite part of it is when Machine Gun Kelly gets put on fire and then waterboarded. No, I'm joking. That's a joke. But uh, yeah, so this is basically about a, uh, these, it's about this drug trade involving pills that grant you a random ability for five minutes and there's a chance you'll die when you take the pill but after you know what your power is like you survived it once you will always get the same power in the future and uh, the market basically centers around this and it's going to be like a huge national threat if it gets mass produced and then there's a chance that it's going to like be made permanent to not just uh, affect you for five minutes so we have three uh three protagonists really who are kind of sharing the screen time the first one is Jamie Foxx, who is, um, <clears throat> he's trying to hunt down his daughter, who is, like, the source of this pill in the first place, because she has, like, some special, uh, Keke Genkai, uh, that's a Naruto thing, but no, she's, like, born special, and they're able to, like, extract her DNA and turn it into pills, I believe that's what it was, and then we've also got, um, this one actor I've seen in a few movies, so I forget his name, uh, but Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, he, he's basically like a cop and he's just trying to clean up his city. I feel like I already saw him play that exact role in The Dark Knight Rises. So this is kind of like seeing him play the same role again. But um, yeah, and we'll get, we'll talk about that more later. And then the third protagonist is, well, more like the second one is um, this girl, this very young child uh, drug dealer who is trying to uh, sell these pills to make money for her diabetic mother. And um, she's also a rapper, which is kind of a weird thing about this movie. And also another weird thing is the fact that this is actually directed by two people who are both white, and it's written by a third person who's also white. So I'd be interested in how they kind of, you know, where do they get like the cultural influence about like growing up as a black person in America or something like that. I don't know if they're like, they have some people on their side who they're asking or if they're just making it up as they go, but like this was obviously a very, a very culturally influenced movie, just like, like Black Panther, for example, but it's not even, like Black Panther was directed by a black person and also uh, Jordan Peele always directs very black influenced movies as well while he's black himself. So this is like the first time I watched a really, a really black cultural movie that wasn't even directed or written by a black person. So just thought I'd mention that because I'd never run into it before. But you know what? If they did this, I think they did a pretty good job. They did kind of capture the experience pretty well. Not that I would know because I'm not black, but I think you know what I mean. So let's hop into our positives here. So I think it's actually kind of above average in a lot of areas, specifically like the action, the CGI is really good, and um, the acting. Like, you know, Netflix could have easily hired someone other than Jamie Foxx or Gordon or Joseph Gordon because those two are probably quite expensive so they could have cheaped out and went for someone else but they didn't so I uh, I appreciated what this movie was trying to do definitely I'm not going to say it's like one of my favorite movies ever but as far as like the superhero genre goes I would say this is actually half decent and you really would not expect it to be decent at all um, as far as negatives go, well, besides the obvious ones that I've talked about so many times, like the fact that it is, you know, it's the same for all these Netflix originals. They're disposable by nature. They're filmed for second screens, um, all that kind of stuff. If I just, I just want to focus on like unique negatives. So as far as unique negatives go, I would say, I think Art, which is the name of the main character in this, played by Jamie Foxx, I would say Art was unintentionally too evil. I don't think the directors realized how this would translate to the screen exactly, because he's supposed to be this sympathetic uh, anti-hero good guy, but he straight up comes off as like a bloodthirsty murderer in this. Every single person he comes across in this movie dies, okay? Even some of the innocent ones, he just doesn't give a crap about anyone but his daughter. He's very tunnel-visioned. So he came off as really evil. 
But that's actually not the reason he came off as evil entirely. That's just like, you know, uh, icing on the cake. The main reason he comes off as evil, evil is because there's one of the more realistic kidnapping scenes in this movie that's honestly quite shocking. It's uh, very realistic. Like, the actor for Robin is genuinely terrified for her life, it sounds like. So he kidnaps a child, and again, you're supposed to excuse it in your brain because he's trying to hunt down his daughter. So, like, kidnapping a child to find his own child is supposed to be, like, justified. But, again, on paper that might make sense, but on the actual screen, he came off as really evil, okay? I love Jamie Foxx. I like him in basically every single thing I've ever seen him in. But, um, you know, his character is way too evil in this, I think. It was a little bit weird at times because Jamie Foxx is kind of the first protagonist. Maybe if they made him the second or third, it would have worked better, but he is the first one, so, yeah. Art is too evil. That's point number one. Point number two, I think um, Joseph Gordon did not need to be in this movie. Yes, he does kind of provide some humor every now and then. He's a little bit of a comedic relief. But, uh, I don't know. I was the least invested in his story of the three stories. Because he's just like a generic cop that wants to clean his city. I've heard that, I've heard that exact spiel a, a hundred times. So, I wasn't really particularly interested in his goals or anything. And um, he only kind of teams up with Jamie Foxx through necessity, really. So I don't think he need to be in there. And I guess, I don't really have any more negatives than that, but I guess I would say that um, Robin, um, maybe you, maybe she didn't need to be a child, actually. I don't actually, how old is that actor? I think if you actually picked an adult actor for that role, I think it would have worked just as well. But, like, that's, I'm just thinking of how to fix the whole art is evil thing, because he just straight up kidnaps a child in this in the most brutal, visceral fashion possible, and he's supposed to be the good guy of the film, which is kind of weird. Um, actually, one more negative I, did, I just thought of is um, the fact that the pills are magical actually has very little bearing on the story itself. I, I think that's, like, a minor problem because the whole identity and shtick of the movie is about these magic pills. But if you literally remove the magical properties from this movie, you would have the exact same film. Maybe a little bit less fantastical with the action, but it would be the exact same story start to finish. So, yeah. Project Power is going to get, I think, a 5 out of 10. The more I talk about it, I originally, I originally put 6, but the more I talk about it, I think I'll land on a 5. The reason I was kind of leaning towards 6 is because Netflix is like really underwhelming in general. But, um, yeah. Okay, we'll go with a 5 out of 10. I think that's pretty fair. It's not the greatest thing ever. It is just kind of a uh, fast-paced uh, superhero thriller thing that has a uh, really mean main character. But, um, yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.